Triple H is saving one of Vince McMahon's rules, and in this video, I'm gonna break it down because the changes that have gone on in WWE over the last two years or so, let's be realistic, about a year and a half, they have been substantial. Whether you look at it from a booking standpoint, whether you look at it from a business standpoint, the changes that have rapidly gone through WWE over this time period, from the Vince McMahon era to the Triple H era has been noticeable. If you look at it from a business standpoint, we went from a Vince McMahon owned company. Now it is a TKO company. It's an Endeavor owned company. You look at the booking, we've gone from horrendous Vince McMahon creative to mostly praised Paul Triple H Levesque creative. When you think about what has gone on, what has transpired over this time, you think of the hush money scandal with Vince McMahon in the summer of 2022. You think about his Twitter retirement, which is hands down one of the most random things I've ever had to cover in my career thus far. You've had Triple H's resurgence with the WWE and what he's been able to do with this brand, a brand that people didn't like, a brand that fans wanted more out of because of what Vince McMahon was doing creatively. Then you see what he's been able to do and elevating people and getting it in this way, and, and hear me out when I say this, as close to the Attitude Era that we have gotten since 2001 in the sense of it's not the over the top, you know, brawn painting matches or anything like that. It's not the shot hot, hot shot angles. It's the undercard having stories. It's guys getting over in a major way and elevating themselves up to the court. It's him putting the women's division more on a showcase. It's guys like LA Knight and Damian Priest elevating themselves up to a higher position. It's bringing in more celebrities and using them in a better way, a la Logan Paul. But as we go through 2024, there is one thing that Triple H is at least keeping. And I think it's interesting. It's not over the top, it's nothing like that, but what Triple H has been able to do with WB is in a lot of ways what he's been able to, what he did with NXT before he had to take an absence due to the heart issue. If you go back, take a step back, when he came up with this idea for NXT, it was innovated and it was really cool. Underline the word cool in that sentence because that's what he made NXT. And guess what he's doing on the main roster? He's making it cool. again. It's cool to be a wrestling fan. It's cool to be a WWE fan yet again. He did that with NXT before the pandemic kind of took away his baby in that sense. Uh, the pandemic absolutely crushed any momentum that he had with NXT, but it all worked out because of where he is now. So what is this big rule change? Well, it pertains to the WB Hall of Fame because WB has started to announce names for this year's Hall of Fame ceremony. A historical class because it's the first to be picked by Triple H and not Vince McMahon for the first time in history. However, though, one rule will remain that McMahon implemented years ago. Now, let's look at this class for a minute. Because the biggest name and the most likely headliner is Paul Heyman, as Philadelphia is the home of ECW, as well as this year's WrestleMania and therefore Hall of Fame class. It's followed by Thunderbolt Patterson, Muhammad Ali, the U.S. Express, which is a tag team made of Mike Rotunda, and Barry Windham, as well as Bull Nakanoa. The ceremony will take place April 5th from the Wells Fargo Center after SmackDown. And on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer noted that McMahon had a rule where every class needed a black wrestler and a women's wrestler, and that is going to be staying. And this is what Meltzer had to say. So it's interesting that Thunderbolt is now allotted in the Hall of Fame. The one thing we learned is when Vince McMahon picked the Hall of Fame, they had a certain quote thing, quote a thing, which was there had to be a black wrestler and there has to be a women's wrestler in every class. And in the new Hall of Fame, it appears that this is the same thing. There's one woman, which is Bull Nakanoa and Thunderbolt. 
meaning the black wrestler. So that's the deal. And then he noted that uh, Leah Maivia, which is a grandmother of The Rock, will also be announced. She is a former promoter. And it looks like The Rock is going to give the Hall of Fame speech. So that's interesting. I don't have a problem with this rule staying intact. I don't think you should have a problem with this rule staying intact. It spreads equality. Um, You could make the case that there should be more inductees to spread the equality. I think Paul Heyman should absolutely, hands down, be the guy to headline this class. I understand, and he said this previously, where he didn't think he should go into the WB Hall of Fame just yet because he's nowhere close to being done with his career as a manager or an advocate or the was it the special counsel to our undisputed WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns. I like the underclass. I think it's solid. I think it touches various aspects of who should go in, who should be honored, right? And although it's there's not a physical Hall of Fame, it's really a web page. The WB Hall of Fame means a lot to a lot of different people. I do believe that there will be one day where there is a physical Hall of Fame. I think it's going to be an exhibit. I would assume it's down in Orlando, Florida, probably somewhere near a performance center. Hey, perhaps it'll be in Connecticut next to the new WB headquarters, right? But I think Paul Heyman from a manager standpoint, from a promoter standpoint, to a color commentator standpoint, um, everything that he's been able to do in the pro wrestling business, even going back to his early days of how he got into the business, which was taking photos for the WWF, the promotion that Vince McMahon bought from his father, Vince McMahon Sr. I think he is a worthy inductee. And I think the reason that he said, you know what, I'll be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame this year is because, one, it's in Philadelphia, the home of ECW, a promotion which he is, you know, arguably the mastermind behind getting it off the ground to the point where it changed the business. I don't think anyone else could have done that, as well as it being the very first inductee under Triple H and not Vince McMahon. You take in those two things, and absolutely Paul Heyman is worthy of a Hall of Fame induction, and I think that's why he accepted a Hall of Fame induction.